Welcome to this Executive Knowledge Lecture on Topic 6, Paper 1 of the SFC Licensing Exams. This topic covers business conduct and client relations. Now, Topic 5 was about external relationships with clients, code of conduct, etc. This talk is about internal operations. As before, I will emphasize the important points to help you understand the core material that you need to know to sit the exam. And a copy of the study notes you see on the screen can be downloaded from the Executive Knowledge website uh, under Paper 1 Resources. And again, I strongly recommend that you supplement this learning with question practice for short-term memory to help you prepare for the exam and you can find over 500 practice questions on the platform examinator.online which is referenced at the bottom of each page. Now what do we have in topic six? The overview you will see that we will uh, be looking at internal control guidelines. So those are the guidelines that have been issued by the SFC. We'll then consider the prevention of money laundering and terrorist financing, the legislation, and again, we have a guideline. Electronic trading is covered. And one area that has attracted a few questions recently, alternative liquidity pools. We will look at what those are and how they are being regulated. Private data privacy ordinance, uh, can often have one question appearing in the exam and then we'll finish off by looking at compliance related issues and other matters concerning business operations and practices. Now at the top of page 6.3 you see that we are just uh, referencing the fact that topic five was external relationships and topic six is internal operations and controls. And as I said, we have the internal control guidelines, the full title there, management, supervision and internal control guidelines for persons licensed by or registered with the SFC. Now there are eight key areas of business control. Uh, they are listed there on page 6.3, and we're going to go through each one uh, separately. Now, uh, after the, those eight points, we note that the SFC recognizes, thankfully, that small entities may not have complicated systems of functional segregation uh, or any compliance internal audit departments. Uh, on, from a practical point of view, that's good news. Small firms, maybe 10, 15 people, the idea of an internal audit department uh, is just not practical, um, unlike some other jurisdictions where they force it, but that's nothing to do with the exams. Uh, internal controls refer to entire systems of policies, procedures, etc. that is noted. And then the four bullet points, bottom of page 6.3, are worth noting because every now and then a question can pop up covering this material. And it notes a licensed registered person, uh, and that includes uh, intermediaries, should use internal controls to provide itself with reasonable assurance that it's able to operate its business in an orderly and efficient manner safeguard the assets of its clients and its own, maintain proper records and reliable financial and other information that it produces, and finally comply with all applicable laws and regulatory requirements. Now, there's nothing there that you would disagree with that's unusual, uh, it's almost fairly bland, but there are four bullet points, always attracts examiners, easy to write a question, make three of them correct and uh, change one of them so that that becomes the answer being incorrect. Let's look at the first key area of business control, management and supervision. Uh, the objective here, management should establish, operate effective management, operational structure, which ensures the business is conducted in a sound, efficient and effective manner. Now you will pick up that this material is not Hong Kong specific. Uh, it is not unique legislation. Uh, this is common around the world, uh, including the, the major financial centers. Uh, so we, we need to be aware of it uh, and appreciate uh, the, the guidelines that are specifically being put forward by the uh, SFC and we follow the objective with the control 
guidelines management are responsible for and we've we've listed the points and as i say uh, fairly uh, very much common sense and you can follow through segregation of duties and functions an important one uh, the objective incompatible duties and functions should be segregated particularly those which when performed by the same person may provide opportunities for abuse or result the overlooking of errors thereby exposing intermediary and its clients to risks in other words you should not have one person doing a number of tasks where errors or inconsistencies are not picked up the control guidelines uh, point out that line operation staff should not conduct policy making supervision advisory compliance internal audit. The, the, these are, are supervisory roles and should not be operated by uh, line operation staff uh, the line is between the client and the provision of the service uh, so sales and marketing would be line operation staff they would not conduct those uh, those duties then we're given details of the tasks that should be segregated from each other uh, and be aware of those moving on personnel and training uh, very much common sense straightforward the objective is listed with the control guidelines similarly information management many years ago this was data processing uh, policies and procedures should be established to ensure integrity, security, availability, reliability, completeness of all information and documentation related to the business, whatever form it's stored. And again, we're given a set of uh, common sense control guidelines. Compliance, uh, the objective, well, you've got to comply with all the rules, uh, policies, procedures, etc. And we're given the guidance that management should establish maintain effective compliance function independent of all operational business functions and a number of others now uh, paragraph 2.6 audit uh, this is not external audit and this point is worth emphasizing uh, this is internal audit let's just look at the objective to establish and operate an audit policy and review function which independently examines, evaluates, reports on the adequacy, effectiveness, efficiency of intermediaries, management, internal controls and operation. The review functions can be performed by internal staff or external consultants, such as firm of accounts, who may be asked to carry out ad hoc or regular reviews. Now, this is different, though, from external audit. The external audit, uh, an outside firm of accountants, comes in, uh, inspects the books and records and reports to shareholders on the accuracy of the accounts. With internal audit, the internal staff or indeed external consultants will report to management uh, on the operations uh, of the internal functions. And we're given, as before, a number of control guidelines. Now, operational controls, this really is uh, fairly wide. Uh, the objective here to have effective policies and procedures and controls over day-to-day -day business operations which ensure uh, a number of points uh, these are uh, again fairly general uh, and very straightforward now do i need to know the controlled guidelines listed for the exam uh, i would suggest no but be aware of the, the the concept behind them for example the first one that's quoted obtain and confirm the true identity of every client beneficial of owner of each client account and the persons authorized to give instructions for its operation now this is an operational control to ensure that no your client is uh, adhered to that you follow the, the code of conduct with regard to due diligence and know your client so these are examples of policies and procedures to ensure that the regulations the codes the guidelines are indeed followed so i wouldn't go memorizing that list uh, but, but i would be aware in the exam they could ask you which of the following would be a, a suitable control or policy procedure uh, to ensure uh, adherence to a, a, a certain regulation uh, so if we know all the other material 
in the paper, uh, we'd be able to navigate our way to the appropriate control guideline if uh, requested in an exam. Paragraph 2.8, uh, the eighth of the eight key areas of internal control, risk management. And here we're told to establish and maintain effective policies, procedures to ensure proper management of risks, identify and quantify risks, provide timely adequate information to enable management to take action to contain and manage the risk. Again, very general, but the point is that uh, the SFC sees risk management, the risk of losing money, the risk of going out of business, the risk of losing clients, assets, as very, very important. Uh, and they've listed the suggested uh, control guidelines. Now, the risk criteria at the bottom of page 6.8 under paragraph 283, uh, you must know for the exam. It's not guaranteed to be examined, but if it comes up, it's straightforward if you know the four major risks. Credit risk, market risk, liquidity risk, and operational risk. Now, I always say that these risks are the risk of losing money, to be quite blunt. So credit risk is the risk of losing money because a client or counterparty will not pay you the default. Market risk is the risk of losing money uh, because you suffer a loss due to the market going against you, whether it goes up or down. Liquidity risk is the risk of not realizing the value of an asset in an illiquid market. There is not enough buyers when you want to sell, and so you will book a, a loss. Uh, that is liquidity risk. And operational risk is the risk of losing money, as it says there, from fraud, errors, omissions, other operational or compliance matters.